Oh man. Hey, this is John Bolger with Premier Guitar. <laughs> I'm here with Doug Aldridge of the Dead Daisies. Doug, man, thanks for joining us. Thanks, man. man. Thanks for, for coming out today. Yeah, what a what a pleasure to hear you rip that thing, well, man. Well, the first one I did was the best one. <laughs> yeah, when, was when the, the camera check. wasn't rolling. Then I, yeah, when I'm not thinking about it, <laughs> yeah. then I'm like, okay, go. Yeah, well, that one kicked ass too. They were <laughs> the one that we got was great too. But hey, let's let's hear about this Les Paul. You've been a lifetime Les Paul guy. I bounced around a bit. I like um, I love all guitars. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm down for owning one of all guitars. <laughs> yeah. you know? I started with uh, with a Les Paul when I was a kid, and um, his Gold Top was my first good one. And I just kind of I went. Around the circles a little bit. I I, I really got into uh, Jacksons and Charvels when I was a kid. Sure. Later, I had a Strat actually prior to that, and um, but eventually Fender, um, I love. Eventually, I I started playing Les Pauls again when I started working with Ronnie James Dio. Sure. And um, and I noticed in some live recordings that we did that the Les Paul was just it was huge. You know? Right. It was like a really fat sound, and uh, so I I kind of went back to him and I got a gold top, um, got a couple of gold tops that, I, that remind me of when I was a kid, you know, so I love it. So do you still have your original one you had when no, you were a kid? No, I, I butchered that one. I had, it was a 73 Deluxe. Sure. And uh, it was, I routed it for pickups and did a bunch of stuff. So as was, you do, as yeah, everybody yeah. did back then, yeah. And, um, and once I got, you know, I got away from that, I started, you know, when Eddie came out with the Wham, Wham right. The whammy bar, um, making it so so important for his sound. I wanted to get a strat with the whammy bar, and um, I gave up the Les Paul to somebody. Yeah. But you get all these almost whammy esque effects just with your bends and, and hands, and it's it's really awesome. I mean, on that Thanks. guitar, it, it it's this, pretty incredible. Well, this that's one thing about um, a, you know, a non-tremolo situation is that yeah. you can do a lot of cool things tuning-wise, like on the go. You can do it. So, like, oh yeah, that's I don't want to get. I don't want to get too away from the point, but. But yeah, the tremolo and the tuning thing is really good with the Les Paul, you know, for that. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that is a huge tone. But like, but like, um, that's just that's just kind of the straight in tone. That's pretty much nothing on except the delay, which I'll turn that off. And so for the for some of those kinds of tremolo effects, you're talking whammy bar effects. Yeah. It's more bending up that I do, which yeah. is like. <laughs> like that you know but god it's great so but, what year is this uh les paul this is uh this is a se uh, 2006 i think it is oh wow um it's a it's a r7 reissue huh. and i had it refretted um because I, I have a certain fret that i really like but what what frets are you running on it these are um i'm actually not sure of the brand because it's a it's a stainless steel it might be a dunlop but they're Probably. a little bit bigger than the. They're, uh, they're bigger. They're um, they're like 6100s kind of. Yeah. And um, probably helps with those big bends just yeah. to have a little more. And and the intonation. When any guitar you get from the shop, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit. But I have this guy in L.A. called Bruce Nelson. He's a great luthier, and uh, he did the frets on this. And these are stainless frets. He talked me into them. At first, I would always go with nickel Dunlops. Yeah. Because I just like the warmth of the nickel. But these, these stainless sound really good. They're really fat and they don't wear out as fast because I kind of tend to play hard yeah. on, with this hand. Lots of little hammer on, um, <laughs> hammer on legato things. Yeah. So I'm kind of right. kind of dig in all the time. If you do that a lot, playing like certain areas a lot, yeah. those frets end up getting worn faster, and then you got to bring them all down. So these, I love these frets. This guitar also has um, a signature pickup that I did with uh, John Sir. 
Oh, cool. They're, they're Aldrich sort of pickups, and they're a little bit hotter. They're, they're not compressed, though. They're really open and nice sound. They clean, they clean up really well. Like, this is just with my volume. Wow. So, um, I love these pickups. He's, these are, um, he's, they're available. You can, you can contact Sir Guitars and get them. And then, um, what else about this guitar? It had, he, when he did the frets, he put a new nut on it. And um, I had some old 70s knobs I stuck on this. Oh, cool. And, yeah. I, and then the last thing is, is the black pickguard. I started doing because I happened to, I bought this guitar actually. This is another guitar, it's pretty much identical, but this one has been, has been relicked. As you can see, it's really, right. it's, all, it's all beat, but it freaking plays amazing. It <laughs> sounds awesome. And when I bought it, I bought it from Cowtown Guitars in Las Vegas about three or four years ago. I, he didn't have a white pickguard, the original pickguard for it. So I said, well, would you, do you have any pickguard? And he, because so I got this black one, you know, if you want. I go, He'd stick it on there, at least I can play it. Because yeah. I'm, I'm used to anchoring off the pickguard yeah. with my picking. Yeah. And um, so I started to look at it, I'm like, it really ties in with the headstock and, right. and the, I really love it. It's like having a black eye, so I called yeah. it the black eye gold top. <laughs> and I started to really like that so that when you saw a gold top sitting around, and if it had a black eye, chances are it might be mine. Yeah, yeah that's great. So I started putting them on all the gold tops I got. So I mean, these are, and that has the same setup, same same pickup, frets, same same, frets. same neck, same everything. Um, the only difference is the knobs. Uh, is there do you, is there a preference or are they you love actually, them both equally? Actually, I, I love that one, but it was getting a little more beat up than I wanted to on <laughs> yeah. the last tour, so I brought this one out. Yeah, and I have a couple others at home. I have an original, not a, it's it's one of my original ones from when I was in White Snake and Dio. Yeah, that um, I broke the headstock a couple times on it, so I decided to retire that one. But it's a really killer uh, gold top, and it's got a bunch of signature scratched on the back of it. Oh, cool. It from like Tony Iommi and La <laughs> Lady Gaga, all these different How people. How cool. Um, so, I actually have a, a sunburst that's got Jimmy Page's oh, initial that's scratched. It's perfect. It's, it's, yeah. it's really cool. I was, yeah. I was like, Jimmy, I don't, you know, I don't want to bother you, but would you scratch your initials? And he's like, yeah, man, I've never done that before. Yeah, <laughs> so he took a fork and he, he went, he did it like this. He went, J, with a, just did a J, and then you just put a hook on the top for P. <laughs> That's great. So I, when he turned 70, I retired that guitar because it was getting a little belt buckle rash too. Sure. But, um, and then uh, as, I've, as far as other guitars on the tour, I have an ESP Tele that me, I want to show Let me a roadie you. for you. I'll yeah. grab that for you. Oh. So the Dead Daisies had a situation where they were, um, where Marco was working with ESP, and he said, hey, you want to talk to the guys about something, about doing something for you? And they, I've always loved ESP. They're a great company. Great guitars. Um, yeah. They've, George, is, George Lynch is a friend, and Bruce Kulick's a friend. A bunch of different, um, a lot of different people. I think even originally Akira Takasaki might have been an ESP guy originally. Um, and I've always loved their guitars, but I never had played one. And I went in their showroom, and they had a, they had a Tele that I really liked. It was a Ron Wood signature model. Right. And then we started talking about maybe doing something that I would, could do get a few different kind of sounds out of it than just a straight telly. So we talked about a telly custom kind of setup with, with set up like a Les Paul. Right. And uh, it's got the Sur pickups in it. And so they, are these your SIG, yeah. your SIG pickups? Great. Yeah, and they they, um, they they took a couple tellies that I had at home that I, with a little chunkier neck. That, so this is a, a bit thicker. It's more like a little bit more like a Les Paul or something like that. And it's a, this is a beautiful guitar. So I'm, I really love uh, what they did for me with this, and did, uh, it's, same it, same frets as your as it, your. It's, it's actually not. They're the same height, but they're not the stainless. I think yeah. these are these are probably. I'm not sure what, what ESP uses, but um, but it's a, it's a killer guitar. Wow, it's a that's a heavy telly. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't mean it to be heavy. It was just probably that piece of wood. Yeah. Usually tellies are are a little bit lighter, but uh, but it sounds killer. Right. Plays great. It's different than this, you know. So yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, is it a is it much of a adjustment when you when you go from your Les Paul to the Tele? It is because the scale's different. Yeah, um, and you know, the, the, just little things like where this this switch is located compared to the Tele 
is, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, you, get every, you, ever, you get everything down so much when you play with one guitar a lot. Right. And then when you switch guitars, no matter what the, what it is, there's little differences. You know. Yeah. Even something like how the the pick plate is set. You yeah. Know? Sometimes they're lower or higher or whatever. And I kind of have to get used to it. But but I really like it. With the Dead Daisies, we travel really light. I just got a couple half stacks, a couple old amps pedals and three guitars. You know what, let's talk about these amps. What I'm using normally is some 70s JMPs that are modified by John Sir. Actually, this is um, a copy of my original one, which actually it got dropped and it's been blowing fuses, so I had to, I gotta get it fixed. I'm gonna be in Dallas tomorrow, so I'm gonna see if I can get it fixed there, get it retubed or whatever it needs. But this is a copy, it's, this is a 78, and it's got a master volume in it. It's really, um, a nice chunky sound on its own. Um, yeah, I'll show you. But it takes it takes pedals really nicely too. And and it's got a dual master volume, so I can, if I want to, boost solos. There, it's off. It's you can't really hear it on the camera, but it boosts it a little bit, so so I can not only in my in ears or in the monitors, but for the front of house guy, it helps to boost the solos a little bit. So that's that. I also have a delay hooked up to it. So for and it's really nice for greasy, you know greasy guitar. It's in the loop of that head. So that head's kind of heavily modified, but it's got the, the essence of a 70s Marshall. It's made in 78. It's amazing how much, I mean, how dirty it gets and how clean it gets just by itself, man. That's killer. Yeah, and if you want to go crazy, you can hit it in the front with, um, I've got a bunch of different pedals, things I've been, I just, oh, yeah. I'm constantly changing all the time. Sure, but. sure. Well, before we, hold on, I want okay. to talk about okay. that, but I want to hear the rest of these these amps. So okay. this is, so this is. This is a 78 JMP. And are you running stereo or? I, I am running stereo, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and this is a stock JCM 800. And I think it's, it's a newer one. Yeah. It's a reissue 800 that is um, a spare amp that, but I'm using that for the other side tonight. And it sounds great. It's Marshall, you know, Especially the 800, pretty much you just plug it in and it, it's, right. it sounds like what you put into it. Yeah. And this is your backup? This just is in actually, case? Uh, this is not my backup, but it's a killer amp by itself. This is um, the, the Dives guitar player, Mike's amp. Oh. And um, they're, they're on tour with us right now. And he's, he's kind of, he's got a really in your face, sticky sound that this JTM 45 is kind of famous for. Oh, cool. Oh, so um, is, is he using your cabinet? Yeah, um, just, oh. just for, you know. Yeah, that's cool, you guys. Uh, for, for ease of, yeah. Know, why, why lug two cabinets? You know? Right, right. And this, this cabinet actually right here is a 76, and it's got cream backs in it. It sounds really nice. Yeah. This one, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's that one. And this one is a reissue that's got 25s in it, 25 green backs. Um, well, it's cool to see the reissue next to the vintage yeah. and how similar they are. Yeah, they did. A, they do a great job. I mean, if yeah. you ever, if you ever are in England, get, actually, all these companies they do amazing things. And when you go to Marshall, just watching them, the guys put the Tolex on the yeah. cabinets is really interesting. How yeah. they do it, and the way that they do everything is is very interesting. So, but I but I love these old ones, man. They just they scream. That's killer. Well, let's talk about your pedal board. And you're not a re you, you don't use a lot of effects. Like what, what I hear mostly is just, I mean, it's a pretty modest pedal board and you're doing a lot of stuff just- I, I actually straight. don't need all of that, but, yeah. I, but I like it. Yeah. It's fun, to ha it's fun to have to mess around with. Of course, I love wah, everybody. Yeah, yeah so that know, is the- uh, This is um, the, the, the Custom Audio Electronics Dunlop. Yeah, wah. part of the Dunlop family. And it's um, made, it was designed by Bob Bradshaw for, um, I think he did it originally for, for Michael Landau. Oh yeah, sure. And I, I just love it, man. It, it's it's got the perfect sweep to it, and um, so so. How does your signal start? You're st are you starting with? The it starts by here. I got a wireless, which normally I would never do a wireless because I'm a cable guy. But yeah. 
Um, a company called Electrosonics makes these wireless. It's tiny. Yeah, that's, that's the receiver. God, it's amazing. So the receiver, I don't have to send signal all the way back to the amps right. and then have it come back to the floor. It goes directly to the floor from my guitar and goes right into the phase 90 and then in, into the into the wah. Phase 90 is a staple. And oh, you can Van get, Halen like made it, or everybody's got to have one after yeah, that. So turned for, all the way down. So for those things, you know. All the way to, you know. In between stuff, kind of Hendrixy. It's kind of got a little, little secret jack of all trades pedal. Yeah, it's Jello. it's amazing um, the variety you get out of that one knob on that pedal. Yeah, yeah. and then it goes into. I have a signature pedal with a company called Magic Box, and it's called the Rocket Fuel, and it's basically a, two different kinds of um, preamps. It's got a, it's got a, an overdrive that. I'm not setting it super hot because yeah. um, it doesn't need it. But then the other side's more of a. It's just really nice. Out of yeah. that, um, I'm going into a Schaefer replica, which is the it's the it's the kind of a copy of the guts of the Nady the Schaefer Nady wireless system that everyone used to play through to get this kind of compressed oh really sticky sound that wow. like it's Angus Young has always has always used those wirelesses yeah. those, old, those old Schaefer isn't that funny where a wireless becomes part of your tone you know Van Halen was using it yeah so anyway it, it's a very subtle thing but it's really yeah. nice that Subtle stickiness. To yeah, it. God, that's great. And then um, coming out of that into a a volume pedal. Yeah, Ernie Ball standard. Standard, which is great for sometimes um, you got a lot of different things going on. Sometimes you just want to grab the pedal, or sometimes sure. if you got a lot of noise happening, instead of a noise gate, which I used to use sometimes, I would just say. If I had all this stuff going, then you yeah. could just clean it up. Kill right it. Away. Yeah, that's great. And then you can tune and all that. But the other thing that it serves is like my tech, um, my tech was right here. Lee Hollister is Lee. <laughs> Lee is amazing. He's a freaking genius. Um, but I said, how I need to see if we can hire um, to make a Y cable out of this thing, so that basically I can tune, but I can also send a talk box. So for. And then if I want That's to great, if man. I want to blend into the regular sound. So you can, when it's in the front of house, it's really loud with the guitar. Yeah. Yeah, what a great blend. That's great, man. Yeah, that's cool. And then out of that, I go into um, an MXR carbon copy delay that I just, right now I'm just, get, I just goof around with it with different noises and stuff. Yeah. Like you might hit something like uh, It's that, it's, I think kind of like that Van Halen thing where he, he did that, that um, end of eruption and then he, he uh, had it kind of sound like a, a dive bomb down. Right. He did, I think he did it like, you know, did one of these things. Yeah, was it like an echoplex or something that he did? Yeah. Or, yeah. Maybe 
it was set like that. Maybe it was set like this. I think, you know, that kind of <laughs> that thing. That is so great, but, so man. I, I just goof around with that thing. Yeah. The last pedal I got here is, um, it's a really awesome new pedal, new technology by Eventide that is, uh, also, I forgot to say, TC Electronics poly tune, sure. the little baby one, it's awesome. Small, doesn't get take up too much footprint. So then the, the Eventide pedal is um, kind of a jack of all trades. It does everything. You yeah. can, it's got everything from fuzzes and verbs and delays and compressors. What do you find yourself using the most on it? With this, right now, I'm doing a split. So stereo, so you can't really hear it on this, but if you stand here, if you stand here, I'll show you. Okay, cool. So that's regular. Regular. But it's got that and then you can you can switch presets and have it with some delays. Yeah. Those are really, really saucy delays for, for Man, clean stuff and whatever. That has got to feel so good to sit, stand in front of that every night. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's basically it. God, that's killer, man. Yeah, nice. yeah. Well, hey, congrats. The band is, this is a killer band. It's, a, it's really, it's a fun band to work with, man. These guys, we've all been friends for years. And, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, we're, we travel light. We're, 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 we're lean and mean with these with our crew, just a few guys. Yeah. But um, but we're able to get out and and we're just kind of doing it one one night at, at a time, one club at a time, and one fan at a time. Right. To try and convert people to uh, check the band out. You know? And what a great vehicle for you to just blow, man. I mean. Yeah. It's. I mean. You it's know, like it's guitar a, band. It's mostly. Yeah? It's mostly about the songs. You know. That's. Yeah. That's really what it comes down sure. to. But. Uh, but there are opportunities. I don't know if you guys are going to stick around. But oh, I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I get warmed up, I'll, I'll throw some stuff out. All right. Hey, man. Pleasure. Thanks, Thanks so much, Sean. Doug. Thank you, brother. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, guys. A little bit of jam. <laughs> All right. Right. Hey, this is John Bolger with Premier Guitar. I'm here with Marco Mendoza of the Dead Daisies. Marco, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah. We, we appreciate all the support. Man, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so I, I know you primarily, you know, driving eighths, but it's mm -hmm. really great to see all that fluidity with your fingers. Oh, and thanks, man. You, I, you, do you spend most time, most of the time on picks or fingers when you're playing? I do live? both, and, and that's a good question. People ask that, as you can tell, I don't use picks. <laughs> yeah. I, I throw a lot of fan stick that. It's yeah. something I developed after so many years. Yeah. It's, it's probably like a nervous tick on stage. <laughs> it's become part of what I do. But yeah. uh, I do both. Depending yeah. on the song, sure. the tone, where you want to go with it, you want to be dynamic. Right. When you're driving, you've got two guitar players, right. monster sound, the pick kind of works. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. When you're playing the slower bouts of eighth notes, I mean the the quarter notes and the half notes, mm. the big footballs that we call, then you go to the finger and that's cool too. Right, right. But when you need attack, I go to the pick. It's something I don't even think about anymore. It's only when people ask. So. Right. Just kind of serve whatever serves the song. Whatever serves the song. Yeah. That's uh, I think you know, and, and I like to talk about that because side of a good drummer and a good bass player is to, to apply yourself to the song, the music. Right. I think that's, and that came with a lot of uh, years of experience. Sure. A lot of maturity, I think. I think I'm mature. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just learning about music, how the whole thing works. Mm -hmm. so the main foundation, our job is to, to uh, provide that foundation for, right. the, for the melodies and the solos and all that. So. Well, when you when you and the band are in full <laughs> flight and you're driving, it is like a it is like a freight train, man. Thank you, it brother. Is huge. Well, yeah. Playing with a cat like uh, Brian is uh, it's a pleasure, man. He's, yeah. Uh, he drives. Yeah. I, and I always that's one of my favorite sayings, man. I have to play with drums that drive. Right. Right. Because you turn you you, you end up being a driver as well. So right. Together it's cool. Well, and it makes it so easy on the guitar players. They can just hang out for they can let they can let ten bars go by. And they just can. Move. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. At the right time they can. But yeah. but what ends up happening is we all kind of 
push each other. We inspire each other on stage and all that. Yeah. This band's great. I can't say enough yeah. good things about this. Killer band. Yeah, killer band. Thanks. Well, let's. This is your <coughs> signature bass, correct? This is my signature bass. It came out with uh, ESV, SCL, LTD. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, and um, I've had a few before, but I got to say, this is uh, this is the closest I've been to developing and the design and all that, because it's a uh, it's. It's, it's you know it's designed by a bass player for a bass player. So right. Got all the good things. I got rid of a lot of the extra stuff. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of a lot of buttons and a lot of options. Sure. I'm a very simple guy. Yeah. I like volume on. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And tone on and off. Yeah. And because I play a lot with my options. Yeah. I tape the one in the middle so I don't do that anymore. <laughs> right. Right. And if I could, I'd probably cancel that. Uh, so just do some volume. Well, and the tone's kind of in your hands anyway. Thank you. I yeah. was just going to say that again, you know, fingers, picks, where you yeah. play. Yeah. You can hear it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And right. what I've, what I've uh, gotten rid of is all the active stuff. So what you're hearing is the wood. Yeah. And the fingers and the pickups. The pickups are pretty, uh, they're, they're passive, but they've got a little bit of a hump of mid-range. I'm a, I'm a big mid-range uh, sure. fan uh, for clarity, yeah. especially with a big rock band. Yeah, loud. absolutely. Yeah, so. that low stuff is as warm as it feels, it gets a little lost. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Wow, and so are the Seymour Duncans, are they stock in your signature bass? They are, they are. I wanted to come up with a bass that anybody could go to the nearest retailer store and just off the rack and say, yeah. boom, you know. Yeah. We also try to make an effort to try to keep it cost effective. Yeah. Because we realize that a lot of a lot of the up and coming players, they don't have a lot of money to sure. spend. So I wanted to make a um, a base that could hang out with if you're gonna go from, you know, beginner to intermediate to a full pro right. guy, you yeah. know. You could probably use the same bass. Oh, absolutely. This one. <laughs> that one right there. It's uh, it's the MM4. I'm so flattered, man. It's yeah. So flattering. Man. Yeah, what an honor. Well, you, and you it deserved is. it. I mean, you've you've had an, you've got this amazing career, and that's you know that's what happens. Thank <laughs> you. Know, you. Yeah, you're not the, long enough, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Played enough hit records. And it's when gonna you, happen. Yeah, yeah. And when you love what you do, too, that's yeah. a big big deal. And I do. I still do. Yeah. Of course, man. Well, so um, are they all? It's a maple neck, of course. It's maple, a maple neck. Maple fingerboard. And we have. Uh, uh, Alder body with a with a maple top to create a, give a little bit of that top. Sure. Something I learned way back. Yeah. And Seymour Duncan and uh, and maple fingerboard. Yeah. Which is also my favorite for rock and roll. Yeah. I, I do a lot of different genres mm -hmm. and uh, maple's begun uh, you know started to be in my my favorite fingerboard. Hmm. Wood. And I see you've got the the drop option on that low string. Just, uh, does that uh, come stock on it? Or it does come some... stock, yeah. That's oh, a that's, hip shot. What a great option to have. Yeah, and one thing I learned throughout the years, too, because we always used to, when Hip Shot came out with it years ago, we used to add it to an existing yeah. base, and it was never right. Yeah. The key is to put it on as you're building the base so you can work out all the kinks. Right. So it's very extremely accurate, which is yeah. Oh yeah. dead on. That's great. That's Except great. Except you man. don't have to. So I don't have to hassle with it, and I go boom, you know? And just absolute immediate. That's great. And I like it. Your neck has a little bit of a volute back there. It does. I'm a big fan of that because also when you're running around, like you'll yeah. see me later, yeah. I'm running around, you kind of lose your place. Sure. And that keeps you in, in, in the first position. Yeah. It's my stop. Yeah, that's great. And a little more strength. It's going to, your neck's not, your headstock's not going to break off. Yeah, up. Exactly. Yeah, when you're. It's a little bit of a slant too. Something yeah. we learned after so many years, we have right. to do a flat. Uh, because we always used to add a tree. Right, right. The, the fender thing. The fender, the precision yeah. jazz. And that's where you started, right? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all did. Man. Yeah. I mean, they, well, that was the only like, game in town back that in the was, day. That yeah. was, yeah, yeah. If, uh, if you start early enough. But um, yeah. I, I have quite a collection. I have a few bases. But, uh, oh, I bet. I bet you've got some cool old stuff. Some cool around. ones, yeah. I'm yeah. not a collector, per se, but I don't. I like to say I'm not a collector, but... Uh, um, Some good tools. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's great. Well, so this obviously is your number one, but this your is. but your second over here, this sexy red thing. Yeah, this is a, a vintage bass. Love this bass. Yeah, that uh, that is beautiful. And actually, man. when I started talking to uh, ESP, this is the first bass that I got from them, and. Um, 
I fell in love with it. Yeah, it's great, yeah. And, and actually this space is designed and modeled after this one. So you start with this and tweaked it to your own specifications. Yes, yeah. And uh, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into building a base. You have to take a lot of things into consideration. Mm -hmm. The material, the, the components, the whole thing. So we try to get as close as we can, but yeah. but this is a beautiful base. Yeah. This will cost a few bucks out there in the market. That one's affordable. That's it's great. available for the beginners, for the intermediate. Just go to your nearest uh, retailer and distributor and ask for the MM4, MM4? ESP LTD. Now, what sort of strings are you running on these? I, I've been working with Diardaria for quite a long time now. They're my favorite string of all time. Yeah, great, great string. And I play a little bit of guitar. I use their strings for guitar and every instrument that I use. Uh, they're just very consistent and uh, they're just a great company. They yeah. support the artist, right. which, is, which means a lot these days. Sure. You know? How long do strings usually last you? I mean, um, you're an aggressive player and you work a lot. Funny so. you should ask. Two nights ago, I broke a string. Wow. My E string, which is unheard of, because yeah. I got 105. You would really have to hit that thing. I up. must have been <laughs> hidden so hard, yeah. so hard, but I popped an E string and I got through the set, and then that's why we have a, a standby bit. Yeah, but, the backup. Uh, so, uh, I would say three shows. Huh. I'm not a fan of the new strings because of the tone. Sure. I think you got to add a little bit of grease on it right, to, right. to give you that the desired tone. Right. Everybody's different. So yeah. uh, there's cats that like to change it every every night. Yeah. Well, and I imagine. remember doing that too. Yeah. But right now with this gig, I'm happy to do two, three gigs at a time. Yeah, this, yeah. this gig needs the grease. Yes, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Okay, so and you're running a wireless unit wireless, out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from there, you're going into your Ampeg SV T4 Pro. Pro. Yeah, which is, uh, again, you know, when, when your author is busy as you as I am, mm -hmm. you want to have the best tools sure. possible available. And again, Ampeg, they set the standard and the precedent to the rest of the freaking market right. out there. Yeah. Everybody's modeling their stuff, uh, you know up against this. So I was happy to land here. I landed here recently and... Uh, right, they, they've been a standard of the industry. They have been. Yeah. And uh, I've always wanted to work with them. It just it never worked out. Yeah. And uh, I'm really happy, man. I no. mean, the tone is unequivocally the, the the best stuff out there. And you're running your, you're running it basically flat, looks like. And Again. Yeah. 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 I'm a big fan of the wood, the pickups and the fingers. Right. And then it gives the front of house and the monitors guy, the monitor guys, a little room to work. Sure, sure. Because I'm a big fan of that. If I ever need some more, then I have options, you know? Yeah. But look at that. Yeah, I'm, I'm running Clean. flat. Clean. Yeah. With every rig I've ever played right. for a long time. And no pedals, I love that. None. Just straight in. Straight in, I'm yeah. old fashioned, old yeah. school. Yeah, rock and roll, that's great. And are you, are you running both of those? Uh, no, we have one on standby in case something, yeah. something happens. Your backup. Here. Backup, because one of them is, I mean, like we'll peel the paint off the walls. It's a lot of wattage. Yeah, it's a, a lot, lot of wattage, yeah. and uh, I think we're going 25 percent, 30 percent. Wow, on the, on the stage, and uh, don't need more. Yeah, you know? and the classic uh, looks like uh, eight, ten eight inch, 10 inch yeah. SVT cab. That's moving a lot of air. The classic man it moves <laughs> yeah. a lot of air. We go. There's a few songs where I use a little distortion, and we go distortion and clean, distortion and clean. Oh, great! So it's not to use the tone, not to lose this the yeah. tone, the bass tone. But uh, and I'm like that. I'm very simple. You know, I'm a simple cat. I like tone. I like the the foundation of everything. Yeah. And, and then it's up to you what you do with it. Yeah. So make it, it work. It's it's. I guess it's when you. The difference is when you really listen to yourself. You really don't. You can get all your tones out of your hands. Yes. Minimal gear, yes. and uh, it's kind of a matter of listening, you know. Listening, and, and there's a lot of cats out there doing some amazing stuff with pedals, yeah. and effects, and all that. Yeah, I just never went that route. I yeah. think I decided at one point I wanted to be a functional working bass player. Right, and and you have. And yeah. I want to be yeah. part of the tools that right. need, that's needed for a gig, for a session, for a song, for right. whatever. And, and that's what it is. And so. you are always working, man. That's I am. Fabulous. I'm so blessed, man. Yeah, that's very, great. Very privileged. I'm working a lot, thank God. And you're out heavy right now. We are. Yeah. We are. Uh, we're doing Nashville tonight. Yeah. Basement East, and we're doing uh, the Dirty Dozen dates, which oh, cool. ended up being like 14 or 15 dates oh, cool. now. But uh, with the Dead Days Seven, the Blast. Yeah. We did Europe, 
South America, Japan, Mexico. Wow. And then we went Now back in Europe, to are, you, are you doing backline gear, just bringing a base, or? or, or we or, do half and half. We bring okay. our stuff and then rent whatever's needed out yeah. there. These days, you gotta do it that way. Sure, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. But we are uh, out there uh, flying the flag high and mighty for classic rock and roll. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, I haven't, uh, this is a great band. Everywhere you look, it's like monsters. Right. These are the, the cream of the crop cats. You yeah. know what I'm saying? These, the, the band couldn't be better. Yeah. And we're constantly pushing and adding songs and rearranging the set. And ultimately, we want to provide the best show and record the best music possible. That's right. a common denominator with everybody. So right. we're having the blast doing it too. Man, you gotta have fun, right? Yo, it's all about that. Well, congratulations, Thank you so much, man. John. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, man. what a Thanks pleasure. For your time, brother. Okay, cheers. Yeah. Till next time. We'll see you soon. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.